Welcome back everyone to another lecture in our CMRP preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to learn about predictive maintenance. In our last lectures, we talked about two types of maintenance, which are corrective maintenance, which is basically just a repair works, which are done only after the failure has already occurred. Then we talked about preventive maintenance, which is age-based maintenance, but we have also learned that we can't only rely on preventive maintenance because many failures are random in nature. So because of that, we had to come up with a different type of maintenance that is not based on the asset age. And this maintenance is what we call predictive maintenance. And predictive maintenance is a maintenance that is carried out based on real-time collected data from any equipment which means that it is a condition-based maintenance and not age-based, because it is based on monitoring the equipment during operation and detecting any signals that could be an indication of a component's potential failure. So now we can have a look again at our famous PF curve. We have earlier identified the maintenance works that are carried out in this zone after function failure as corrective maintenance, while maintenance works that are carried out in this zone prior to the function failure as preventive maintenance. Now we have a new type of maintenance which could be carried out any time prior to function failure based on specific failure signals. As we can see here, those signals could start by early signals which could be noticed only through readings from monitoring equipment or more clear signals such as audible noise or hot equipment, which means that the failure is very close to a cure. So predictive maintenance is carried out based on technologies that are applied to check the condition of an equipment. Using such technology, we can discover early signs of failure as explained. The technologies to be used is based on the nature of the asset. For example, we could use vibration analysis to discover excessive vibrations in rotating equipment such as pumps and turbines. Excessive vibrations could be a sign for a potential failure of the pump's components. Also, we could use technologies such as thermography inspection. Excessive temperature could be due to high friction, which may require lubrication or replacement of some components. The purpose of predictive maintenance is to optimize the reliability of the asset by continuously monitoring their condition and to make sure that they are maintained prior to the failure. And predictive inspections are also planned and scheduled using the same techniques used to plan and schedule preventive maintenance, which we are going to learn in detail later on in this course under the maintenance management chapter. So if you think about it, predictive maintenance is actually another form of preventive maintenance. However, instead of relying on age, we are relying on the condition of the assets. So when should we implement a predictive maintenance plan on a certain asset? We apply predictive maintenance if only one of the following four conditions are applicable. First is if our asset's spare parts have high variability. Second, if the asset's failure has a safety effect. Third is for economic concerns. And finally, in case of high progressive failure. We are going to explain now what do we mean by each one of those conditions. First is high variability. Here we can see a graph that shows the average mean time between failure for different components in a certain system. And the mean time between failure is the expected time for this spare part to fail. And we are going to learn more about this in details later on in this course. So here we can notice that the average mean time between failure for those parts are close to each other. And in this case, it makes sense that we can set a preventive maintenance task to be carried out at this time interval. When we carry out the preventive maintenance at this point, we will be able to replace the majority of the parts before failure, and we won't lose much of the useful lifetime of the remaining parts, and in this case, this system has low variability. And in such system, there is a bigger chance for us to rely on an age-based maintenance plan, which is preventive maintenance plan. On the other hand, here we can see another system with different mean time for failure of its spare parts. This time we can see that there is a huge variation between the different spare parts. 
So if we decided to set the time interval for our preventive maintenance to be at this point, the majority of the spare parts will fail before we carry out the preventive maintenance. And if we decided to carry out the preventive maintenance at an early time interval, for example at this point, we will be able to replace the majority of the parts between failure, but we will waste a huge percentage of the useful lifetime of the remaining spare parts. And this is not a financially smart decision to do. So in this case, we need to rely on predictive maintenance instead of preventive maintenance. And this is what we mean by high variability. Here we can see a failure density distribution for the different components on both systems. And we can see that the blue curve represents a system with high variability, which is the graph on the left of the slide, while the yellow curve represents a system with low variability, which is the graph on the right of the slide. In this third pillar, we are going to discuss in details what do we mean by failure density and how to plot such graphs. Second, is in case of the asset's failure has a major safety concern. For example, if the failure of a certain component could be in a form of explosion or has a potential to cause fire, in this case, we can't risk it by relying on preventive maintenance only and we must monitor the condition of the asset through predictive maintenance. Third is for economic concerns, and this could be in two different cases. First, if the failure of this asset is expected to cause a severe economic effect, and in this case, we need to monitor the condition of this asset. And second, if the preventive maintenance would be too costly, so we can't replace parts while they are still in good condition. And in this case, we also rely on condition-based maintenance. Fourth, and finally, is in case of high progressive failure. Since we started in this course, we understood that the failure is not actually an instantaneous event. However, there are certain warning signs that if they were detected early, the failure could be prevented. And we learned also that most assets follow a curve from good to progressive worse till they finally fail. And the duration between those two points, which are P potential failure and F function failure, is what we call the PF interval, which is the duration between the first signs of the failure and the actual failure occurring. But the PF interval is different from one asset to another and from one spare part to another. So the curve, some other assets can have a shorter PF interval like this, or even a shorter PF interval. So in case if a certain asset is expected to have a high progressive failure, which is a shorter PF interval, it makes sense that we should closely monitor the condition of the asset to avoid its failure. So in this case, we rely on a condition-based maintenance, which is predictive maintenance. Here we can see a comparison between preventive maintenance plan and a predictive maintenance plan. In the preventive maintenance plan, the T interval between each maintenance activity is constant because the preventive maintenance is actually a time-based maintenance. But in this case, we can see that sometimes we interfere while the asset is still in a good condition, which means that we waste resources by replacing parts which are still in good condition. And sometimes, the failure occur before the preventive maintenance operation. And this is because the majority of failures actually follow a random pattern which we can't predict based on age, and this is what we are going to learn in details in a separate lecture in the next chapter. Meanwhile, here we can see a predictive maintenance plan, and in this case, the time interval between each maintenance operation is not constant, because it depends on the condition of the asset, so sometimes the condition deteriorates faster, while sometimes it takes longer to deteriorate. And this is why the time interval is not constant. Even though predictive maintenance is very important, and it helps eliminating many potential failures. However, it is important to realize that predictive maintenance won't stop the asset from the normal degradation, and it doesn't replace the age-based preventive maintenance. However, they both complement each other when they are combined in an overall maintenance plan. As we discussed the last lecture, preventive maintenance should contribute for approximately 20% of the planned maintenance activities. Also, predictive maintenance can't detect the uniform wear in the asset performance. 
when we started talking about predictive maintenance, we stated that predictive maintenance is a maintenance that is carried out based on real-time collected data from any equipment. So how do we collect those data? This is what we are going to learn in our next lecture about inspections. So this is it for our lecture today. See you in our next lecture. Thank you. Thank you.